the advertisements join merchant navy get paid and see the world too and i fell for it What's up guys welcome back to the channel on today's special episode we have a celebrity captain famously known as captain sins on his various social media accounts today's episode will be in english as a lot of you requested me from the previous video with captain sunil the important topics which we will cover are number 1 important tips for merchant navy aspirants and new joiners number 2 the waiting in merchant navy in the current scenario Number 3 Captain Tarun struggle for finding a ship after his pre sea. Number 4 toughest moments he faced as a captain on board. Number 5 why did he quit shipping. So most importantly there will be a rapid fire session towards the end where there are a lot a lot of information the realities of Mochi Navy. So do watch the video till the end and let's head over to Captain Tarun. Hey Karan thanks a lot for having me on your YouTube channel. Hello guys I'm Captain Tarun Kumar I'm a sailing master mariner since 2017 and you can follow my journey on my Instagram handle captain_sense and let the game begin So welcome Captain Tarun and we will start with my standard question why did you join the merchant navy Well Karan great question why I decided to join merchant navy Well I, I didn't decide it as much as I teach and preach people today there was no there was not much thought given uh by me that time and it has been a rewarding journey for me professionally as well as personally but when i completed my class 12th i had as such no plans in my mind i was planning for medical exams i got through the bds entrance exams which is dental exams got through bharatiya vidyapeeth pune but it was on the fateful day of a sunday morning when i read the sunday times and the advertisements join merchant navy get paid and see the world too and i fell for it and here i am today 15 years down the line sailing as a captain like i said no regrets i have what i have today because of this profession because what sea is a profession gave me but trust me when i applied for my merchant navy entrance exam in amet i had no clue about how many sites are there in fact i was asked that would you like to join deck side or engine side and i said i want to become captain and so what is the most important thing you have learned in your entire merchant navy career which you would like to advise youngsters uh, well i would say you know the sea is forgiving and the sea judges you on your merit it's not gender bias it's not color bias uh, it's not religion bias it it just judges you on your merit and like charles darwin gave the theory it's survival of the fittest so you need to if you're out there you need to prove yourself and in case whatever is your journey whatever rank you aspire to be you need to work your way up through and you need to prove it to the company you need to prove it to the management that if you want to be the captain you are that material and i'm i'm sure that it is a profession which gives fair treatment and fair chance to everyone lovely sir lovely and uh, i loved the charles darwin quote you just put so coming on that quote sir what were the toughest moment you faced being a master on board something which you, which you will remember for the rest of your life the toughest uh, encounter i had was during uh, norway we were at anchorage and uh, i was in narvik we were waiting for the berth to be available and uh, it was just supposed to be a 12 hour stay at anchor and then we were supposed to shift to berth and boom came this wind forecast which uh, uh, projected the wind speed to be around uh, 30 40 knots and as we were within the breakwaters so i required the pilot in case you know if i need to make any maneuver and then all of a sudden the wind instead of 40 it came all the way to 70 75 knots and barely you know a couple of cables away from the land calling the tugs having the pilot ready stand by getting those tugs in position it was overwhelming for me the crew actually delivered a lot you know with uh, minus 10 minus 15 outside temperature they were manning the forward stations giving me the position of the cable and using the engines and the tugs i was able to keep the vessel pretty much in the position uh, the experience lasted for i would say a couple of hours but those couple of hours it was like forever and finally when the wind died down i was actually on my knees and i was like thank god and i think that was the toughest moment because it was perhaps it happened to me in the first cover and i was taken aback a little unprepared so that was it 
this profession gets really tough when things go bad as you just said and uh, captain how long did it take for you to become a captain from your cadetship uh, well i started uh, well, i completed my c pre c training in 2004 year 2004 and uh, took me around 2 uh, years before i was able to find myself a company uh, i took command in 2017 total sea time i would say is approximately 46 months from cadet to uh, from third officer uh, to master so captain uh, uh, suppose you have a first time cadet joining your ship so what do you or a third officer so what do you expect from them because a lot of people want to know that well uh, as a master as a chief officer uh, and today i mean like as a, as a as a superintendent when i'm not sailing we just want people to show up prepared we don't expect people to quote rules of the road word by word we expect them to show up prepared i mean like you, we must feel that they know you know that they had a certain amount of planning you know before joining a ship so we are there to guide but uh, i would really advise youngsters um, like to show up prepared put in certain amount of uh, efforts it's just like you're preparing for a bout you know uh, so you the more you you know bleed in the practice the le the, the less amount of effort you will require when you actually go for the for the game day for the match day so just show up better prepared and rest everything will fall in its place trust me that's that has been my mantra for 15 years of my sailing career people who want to join the merchant navy right now is it safe to join or uh, do you have any tips for the aspirants uh, right now in this industry any uh, young aspirant uh, who's willing to join a merchant navy and who's willing to take up this career as a professional career for the rest of their life whether girl or a boy uh, and I see a lot many lives these days, you know, talking about gender equality. It's very safe. It's out there for you. We need young blood. We need fresh blood. And the history has been, uh, it has it has been the, you know, perhaps the prima facie evidence, I would say, you know, that the young blood has changed, has brought the revolution. So definitely, if you are looking Merchant Navy as a profession, and if you, are, if you want my opinion that whether it is safe or not, yes, it is definitely safe. And uh, the standards are just going to improve. Uh, as, as, as time progresses. And I uh, heard you saying in your live session that you had to wait for two years before you got your first ship after your pre -C. So what are your thoughts on that sir right now? Well I would say uh, I was not informed and that's why I suffered my way through. There were sponsorships available that time as well but uh, like any other soul who ends up missing the sponsorship now I was pretty much the same soul and that was the reason I started my Instagram page of sharing this journey of to be better informed. Please don't take Merchant Navy as a profession which is just out there, you know, to be, you know, for everyone. It's not that. Uh, definitely there is competition. Definitely you need to uh, compete. There is a channel with which you are supposed to join. Uh, that is perhaps at least for Indian seafarers is to apply for IMUCT, make sure you are sponsored. So, Governor, let's go to the next point. The point which says, why? Did you quit shipping to join a shore job? Well, I would say, Karan, that I have not quit shipping. I have just changed how I ship <laughs> or how I monitor my ships. Uh, I am pretty much part of the shipping fraternity. In fact, now more involved than ever. Uh, as a command, I was handling one ship. Uh, as a marine superintendent, I am taking care of 20 vessels, managing their operations, their day-to-day -day routines, you know. And, and I always wanted that... Uh, uh, as a shippy, you know, there has to be multiple dimensions, you know, so I have done my bit of sailing. Now I wanted to see what goes behind the scene, you know, how ships are taken care of, what are the freight rates, how little we know about ships when we are sailing. Sometimes we are not even aware that where the cargo has come from, where is it going to go once we have, you know, discharged it, what is going to be the freight rate of the cargo, what kind of money is it being, uh, I mean, like is being made on the cargo and uh, uh, the overall journey of ships, you know, how the bunkers are availed, how the surveys are booked, we know, we know very little. And I always wanted to know this behind the scene uh, kind of attribute of shipping. Got it, sir. Got it, sir. So, um, what is the salary difference now when you were earning as a captain and now as a marine superintendent, if you want to disclose a little bit of it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, first of all, is the taxation part which scares the you know the hell out of us uh, of course then you you are paying taxes on your salary as a shippy you don't end up paying any taxes whatsoever i've done uh, quite a bit of lives over that so that's the biggest attribute a typical salary i would say a master is uh, paid around ten thousand dollars a bulk area master and for a, a say like an lng master it can go as high as sixteen seventeen thousand dollars so depending on which side of the spectrum of shipping uh, you were selling depends how much is going to be the salary cut because show job typically they will start with the 
uh, I would say from 36 lakhs per annum and they can go as high as 45 lakhs per annum but that's going to be the start. But remember one 10% hike in your uh, or 20% hike in next 2-3 years you are going to be making uh, quite, uh, quite a bit of money and without even sailing. So you need to be a little patient because you are going to start from ground again and you are going to make uh, work your way up. So let's uh, ask you finally, sir, are you married or not? Well, that's a question, you know, which has always been like, you know, coming back and forth. It's like an echo, you know, keeps coming back to me. And no matter how I answer, you know, it still comes back to me, you know. And I think perhaps this question is more like, you know, who's Ridhima? So, uh, so you just put the ball in my court again, but this is, this time it is. <laughs> no, the ball is in my court. I decided to throw it in, in, in at a place where you cannot catch it. I think we need to have a part two for that. Yes, for sure. For sure, sir. Part two should be there. But I have answered it. No, you haven't answered it. <laughs> it's there on my page. Follow me on Instagram. Watch me on my Instagram. IGTV, you'll see it somewhere. And next, we have the most awaited rapid fire session. So, Kam Tarun, you can answer this in one word or one sentence at the most. Are you ready? Ready. Uh, brace myself for the impact. Okay, sir. So, first question. One tip to become a captain fast. Buy yourself appellates. <laughs> That's a good one. Favorite port? Uh, I would say any US port. I'm a shopaholic. One uh, expensive thing you own? Well, my car. I'm driving an Audi. Uh, but something expensive which I can own in future can be an expensive lawsuit if I don't mend my ways. And sir, are you a strict master? Well, I won't say I'm a strict master, but I'm a disciplined master. The company is paying me quite a lot to make sure that the vessel's operations are carried out as safely as possible and the responsibility of 22 souls they ride on my shoulder. So I, I, I make sure that, you know, what is required to be done by the books is executed. So Kevin, one advice for the young Merchant Navy aspirants. Organization is one thing that if you stay organized, you know, you will, the, the destiny, the luck, everything is going to favor you. Stay organized and work hard. What do you think is the future scope of Merchant Navy in the coming years? You look at any great economical power today, it has always been a great shipping power. You look at China, America, Portuguese back in the days, Spanish, British, the great uh, British Empire. They're, they're, the backbone of their economy and their journey has been shipping. And even till date, the biggest example is going to be the pandemic, the Corona pandemic. The shipping has survived the pandemic. There has not been a single day when ships has been put to anchor because they cannot trade any country the economical drive engine is run by shipping so i don't think there is any reason that we as shippies or shipping itself uh, is going to you know run dry or we are going to see shipping coming to an end the ship types will definitely challenge will change the kind of ranks which we have the number of complements which we have on board the technology on board the ships can definitely change but shipping is is here to stay so captain tarun this was a beautiful insightful session with you Thank you so much for joining us on YouTube and I hope you make a channel soon. So guys, please write down in the comment section that if Captain Sins should come on YouTube or not.